Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I'm an occupational therapist here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and today I'm going to be talking about a sensory spa day that you can have with your child if they're struggling with tactile defensiveness or any sort of sensory aversions, because a spa day is a fun way to tackle those kinds of issues. Many times families that I see struggle with making different therapy strategies that we use here in the clinic accessible at home and something fun that their child wants to participate in. We're used to struggling with bath time or bedtime or even just to clip our nails. But if you make it a fun sensory spa day, there might be a little bit more of a chance that your child will be involved and engaged with you. So today I'm just gonna go through a lot of ideas that you can use to help your child have fun with you and pretend you're at a lovely spa all while working on all of the different senses, our sight, sound, touch, taste, every sense that we can address through some fun sensory spa activities. To get started, make sure that you have fun attire and a fun spa day look. You can do fun headbands if you're going to be doing face masks or washing your face. You can wear a fun robe. Um, I would encourage maybe doing some cucumbers over the eyes if you're at all interested in that. And just having a fun time creating a silly, goofy look for you and your child to get into the spa day mood. With headbands and keeping hair out of the face, it's a great time to do face masks. Or you can do cool rolling on the face. Um, if your child is into makeup, you can do makeup together. You can keep those cucumbers on over the eyes. You can do lip gloss, all different kinds of spa day activities that help with us allowing things to be on and around our face. You can even start with something as simple as taking a wet washcloth and dabbing it on the five zones of your face. And you can make it cold, you can make it really warm. You could even take an ice cube and put it in the washcloth and say, can you feel the ice cube through the washcloth? And just start really small and basic, or you can move up to face masks like this, or like charcoal face masks that might bubble or harden, and how does it feel against our skin? And always make sure that your child knows how to get these things off of their skin. So if that face mask starts to feel uncomfortable, have a trash can nearby where they can take it off and put it in. Have a dry washcloth nearby where they can dry their face off. Always have a way out of the activity because that helps your child to feel more comfortable diving in. Also along with my headband, you can do different things with hair. You can put in fun hair clips, pulling back hair in different ways. Many, uh, Kids I see these days are using some of the 90s hairstyles we all know and love, like little butterfly clips. We can do braids, twists, brushing out our hair, all different things to help children feel more comfortable with tactile sensations along their scalp. You can use a brush or a fine toothed comb to work through their hair. And just in case you weren't aware, there are different ways that we can help work a comb or brush through the hair without it tugging on our scalp as much. Many people seem to already know these practices, but I just wanna give you the tips in case you haven't heard of them. So first you start at the ends, something that will help you to work through all of the knots as you work your way up and holding the hair. So if I hold my hair here and I pinch it almost like a hair tie and then I brush through some of it, it won't pull on my scalp as much until you can work your way all the way up to the top. And a fine toothed comb like this is a little bit gentler on hair than a brush. It can also help to spray detangling spray on our hair before brushing through it, just to make sure that everything is as smooth as can be. And that can all be part of a fun spa day. To keep talking about our tactile system, the biggest organ in our body, the skin, is super important. We can do different things like rub lotion on our bodies, use a body scrub if we want something more exfoliating. We can use loofahs. I have a fun waffle shaped loofah. And something that I love to show families is this gel that is used in nail salons to frequently place our feet in, or you can even use it for your child's hands. You can order this off of Amazon. So what you do is you take this packet, it will come with two different pockets. Number one is this powder, I'll show you as I pour it in, that you pour into some water. 
and you fill this in with as much or as little powder as you'd like and you stir it and as it reacts with the water it's going to become like a gel thick like substance as you can already see it's starting to solidify and become more thick and if you put a lot of powder in it becomes this thick almost like kinetic sand like substance very gelatin and then almost a fluffy kind of texture and this can be fun for your child to put their hands and feet in to rub on your body it smells really nice so you're also activating that um olfactory system in addition to that, you can also use things like diffusers, essential oils. You could cut up fruit and put it in water or put it in a bath. You can also dye a bath with food coloring or put food coloring in water. If you wouldn't want to get in a bath with food coloring, you can also use bath bombs or bubble baths, anything to make that bath a little bit more fun to jump into. Along with smells, it's also important for us to talk about our sight and sound. We can change the look of the room, we can make it darker, we can add candles, we can also play music, see what different kinds of music your child would like to listen to. Do they respond well to spa music, the typical spa kind of music? Do they want classical music? Do they respond better if you've got kids bop playing and that helps them to relax? Helping their bodies explore what feels good and what doesn't is also really important because we also have to take time to reflect on what we're feeling and not just letting it happen to us. In addition to all those other senses, it's also important for a lot of my families to clip nails. Having a spa day and having it under the guise of something fun can be a really great way to introduce your kids to that, especially if you've already played in the bath or used that gel from the nail salon because their nails will be a little bit softer. You can introduce nail files going back and forth. You can use little tiny nail clippers. We can also use nail polish or stickers that go on the nails if nail polish or even clipping our nails is a little tricky and a little scary. Something that I really like to let kids do is clip my own nails and let them see how the nail clippers work. And then I will tell them, okay, we'll do a little teeny tiny clip one little clip where do you want me to clip it which nail and i'll show them how it doesn't hurt they don't feel anything when their nails are clipped because many times they're worried that it's going to be painful especially if they're really sensitive to a lot of tactile input another sensory system that we haven't talked about yet is our taste we can also address this through our spa day and make it a really good opportunity to explore new foods or to bring comfort while doing all these activities. I highly suggest a spa day smoothie where you can use those different fresh fruits or you can even make a spa day milkshake if your child prefers chocolate milk or something along those lines. But it's a great way to mix something into a smoothie, something new, some fruits, some vegetables, have your child be a part of what goes into it and maybe you add cucumbers and then you say because we've got cucumbers on our eyes or you have a platter of fresh strawberries and some cheese and you make it a fun little snack tray and say okay we're gonna paint our nails what snack do we have while we paint our nails and now we're having our face masks set for 10 minutes what snack should we eat while we do that just making it a complete sensory experience some other additional ideas of things you can do include mimicking hot stones by making wet washcloths really hot and then placing them along your child, especially after they've cooled down to a safe temperature, or using cold washcloths and seeing how they like that against their neck or their forehead, playing with temperature and seeing what helps their body to relax or what helps wake them up. You can also do things like a face massage or ear massage and having your child lay down and just practicing, oh, where do I like where my face is rubbed? Or maybe if you use lotion, hydrating moisturizer, you might say, oh, does it feel better when there's something smooth? Do we like how cool it is? And with all of these things, especially with touching and clipping nails, it is really important to allow your child to do those things to you as well because it shows them that it's safe and that it's comfortable and it allows them to explore that activity and that sensation without it happening to them. They're the one 
doing it to you. And so they know, oh, I can clip mom's nails or I can rub lotion on dad's face. That's fun. I want him to try it in the same way on mine. It's just a great way for them to engage in the activity and see that it's safe and comfortable the more that you are involved in it as well. I hope that you have found some of the ideas in this video helpful. I hope that you and your child enjoy engaging in these activities, that they help them not only become more comfortable with different sensory sensations and inputs, but also that it's a way for you guys to bond and enjoy one another and have fun while growing together. If you have any other ideas, please feel free to share in the comments and to add to the discussion. I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon. Bye.